here, I think we should discuss John Gutfriend. This is a very interesting human example, which will be taught in every decent professional school for at least a full generation. Gutfriend has a trusted employee, and it comes to light, not through confession, but by accident, that the trusted employee has lied like hell to the government and manipulated the accounting system, and it was really equivalent to forgery. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the man immediately says, I've never done it before, I'll never do it again, it was an isolated example. And of course it was obvious that he, he wasn't trying to, he was trying to help the government as well as himself, because he thought the government had been dumb enough to pass a, a rule that he'd spoken against. And after all, if a government's not going to pay attention to a bond trader at Solomon, what kind of a government can it be? And, and, and uh, but at any rate, and this guy has been part of a little clique that has made well, way into, well, way over a billion dollars for Solomon in the very recent past, and it's a little handful of people. And so there are a lot of psychological forces at work, and, and you know the guy's wife, and, and he's right in front of you, and there's human sympathy, and he's sort of asking for your help, which is the form which encourages reciprocation, and there are all these psychological tendencies are working, plus the fact he's part of a group that made a lot of money for you. At any rate, good friend does not cashier the man. And of course, he had done it before, and he did do it again. Well, now you look as though you almost wanted him to do it again. Or God knows what you look like, but it isn't good. And uh, and, and that simple decision destroyed John Goodfriend. And, uh, and it's so easy to do. Now let's think it through. Like the bridge player, like Zeckhauser. You find an isolated example of a little old lady in the Seas Candy Company, one of our subsidiaries, getting into the till. And what does she say? I never did it before. I'll never do it again. This is going to ruin my life. Please help me. And you know her children and her friends, and she's been around 30 years, and standing behind the candy counter with swollen ankles, and you're an old lady, isn't that glorious a life? And you're rich and powerful, and there she is. I never did it before, and I'll never do it again. Well, how likely is it that she never did it before? If you're going to catch 10 embezzlements a year, what are the chances that any one of them, applying what Tversky and Common call baseline information, will be somebody who only did it this once. And the people who have done it before and are going to do it again, what are they all going to say? Well, in the history of the Seas Candy Company, they always say, I never did it before, and I'm never going to do it again. And we cashier them. It would be evil not to. Because terribly, behavior spreads. Remember, what was it, Serpico? I mean, you, you let that stuff, you got social proof, you got incentive caused bias, you got a whole lot of psychological factors that will cause the evil behavior to spread. And pretty soon the whole damn, your place is rotten, the civilization is rotten. It's not the right way to behave. And, uh, and uh, I will admit that I have, when I knew the wife and children, I have paid severance pay when I fire somebody for taking a mistress on a extended foreign trip. It's not the adultery I mind, it's the embezzlement. And, uh, but there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it where a good friend did it, where they've been cheating somebody else on my behalf. There I think you have to cashier, but if they're just stealing from you and you get rid of them, I don't think you need the last ounce of vengeance. In fact, I don't think you need any vengeance. I don't think vengeance is much good.